Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, A Conversation with Death. The man who rules the world and the angel of darkness take on a horde of demons in this inaugural John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes, A Conversation with Death for 99 cents on Kindle or in paperback today. When I look at Kevin Feig's recent decision to make Captain Marvel the flagship character of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I see the reason why black people need to have their own black-owned black media. Because it's only in black-owned black media where black people will be appreciated for their contributions to things like African-American fantasy and science fiction. Because what Kevin Feig did to many of those black people who went out of their way to go see Black Panther was a complete slap in the face to all of those black people who spent hundreds of millions of dollars trying to elevate Black Panther to an incredible phenomenon and went out of their way to make Black Panther a worldwide phenomenon. Now, when I look at what they did, what Kevin Feige did by announcing that Captain Marvel would be the new flagship character of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, again, it's a complete slap in the face to all of those black people who spent money on the movie tickets for Black Panther and went out here and spent money on merchandise for Black Panther. They went out, well, most of these black people went out of their way to go and try to elevate this Black Panther into a worldwide phenomenon, and your Kevin Feige decides that their black dollars had absolutely no value to him. Because when he made the announcement that Captain Marvel would be the new flagship character of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he put white supremacy above the value of the black dollar. Because your Captain Marvel in the comic books is an incredibly unpopular white female heroine. She has not been able to carry her own comic book series. And your Captain Marvel is panned by many comic fans all across the country. So to make her a flagship character over a black character who has proven that he has been able to maintain his popularity for over 50 years, has starred in a movie that is a worldwide phenomenon, making a billion dollars faster than any of the white Marvel Cinematic Universe characters, and literally sold out of every piece of merchandise that was licensed at retailers all across the country. That is a slap in the face to all black people out here, and it shows how your Kevin Feig and many in the big six media have no respect for black people, have no respect for the black dollar, and have no respect for the black image. And when I take a look at how they literally disrespected the efforts of black people with Black Panther, and I also look at the way John Diggle was treated on the CW's Arrow, where they gave him the mantle of the Green Arrow, and then took it away from him, and then literally treated him like he was some sort of slave on those last episodes of Arrow, where he was begging to put the costume back on. It, again, shows me why we need our own black-owned black media. Because only in black-owned black media are we going to get balanced and humanized images of ourselves, and only in black-owned black media are we going to get the appreciation and respect we get when we go out here and present our own images of ourselves. That's the only way we are going to see a value of self is if we go out here and create our own media and then share our own media with ourselves because it's clear to me from the way your Greg Berlanti has treated black characters on his shows like Black Lightning and Arrow, and the way your Kevin Feig literally disregarded billions of black dollars that he had absolutely no respect for in, by going out here and making Captain Marvel the flagship character, that the black, black people are not going to be appreciated on mainstream 
white platforms as related to superheroes, science fiction, or fantasy. And that's why we have to go out and create our own platforms for ourselves. Because I look at what the black-owned production company that makes Netflix's Luke Cage has done, and I believe we could do even greater things if we went out here and built our own black-owned black media platform and created a platform for our own superheroes and told our own stories and told our own stories from our own experience. Because the only way, I believe again, we are going to see a positive and balanced image of black people is if we do it ourselves. Because again, I look at the way Netflix's Luke Cage has made an amazing job of elevating these stereotype characters and turning them into human types. And I believe, again, we can do greater on our own than we could by staying on these mainstream platforms where our efforts to support them are literally blown off, brushed off, while they go out here and try to elevate white people like this Captain Marvel and this Brie Larson who have not proven themselves to be able to qualify, to move to the next level, and then you just give her this, this flagship position just because she's a white female. And the real reason why they gave her that position, again, is because when it comes down to these white-owned media platforms, many of these owners of the big six just don't like the idea of, of many white children going out here and playing with a black character as a toy. They don't like the idea of a black character being the front face of their company, and they don't like the idea of a black character being the face of their company. And that's one of the other reasons why I believe that Disney made Captain Marvel the flagship character of the Marvel Cinematic Universe from Avengers 4 on, is that many of those racists who work at the executive level, they were angry that this Black Panther character had been well received by people not only in black America but America overall and the world internationally. I believe that's what made them so angry because when it comes down to many of these media moguls and these executives they want the image of white to be first in people's mind and they want people worshiping the image of white people first. So when they saw Black Panther become popular and they started to see little white children wanting to play with a black action figure, little Asian kids wanting to play with a black action figure, little Hispanic kids wanting to play with an action figure, like I saw when I just came out of a laundromat this weekend, where I saw two Hispanic kids with Black Panther action figures, and they were playing with them. That's something white supremacists don't want to see, and that's something white supremacists don't want to see on a platform like Disney. And that's why they'd go out of their way to take a losing white female and give her the flagship position on their media platform because they want their media platform to be about their media, their image, because as I've said in numerous videos before, those who control the money control the media and those who control the media control the narrative and the story that they want to tell on their platforms is a story of white supremacy and that a white person will be the superior who leads all the people in something like a Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, as a person who believes in black-owned black media, I believe in the concept of black first, and I believe the only way, again, we can have positive humanized images of black people is if we have black-owned black media, black-owned black media platforms, and black-owned black media platforms that are black first. Not compromised platforms like your BET or your TV One. We need black-owned black media platforms because it's the only place where we can go out and spend a billion dollars of our $1.1 $1 trillion in cash spending power and our $2.2 trillion in cash spending power, where that money will be appreciated, 
where that money will be valued, and where that money will be used to turn over to hire other black people and keep other black people employed and keep money inside of the black community. That's what I believe we need to do because when we go out here and we spend three, four, five hundred million dollars trying to make something like Black Panther a worldwide phenomenon and your Kevin Feig just decides to ignore that three, four, five hundred million dollars in spending power, that shows us that he has no respect for the black dollar, he has no respect for black people, and he has no respect for the black image. Because all those black people and all those people all over the world, they went out here and they spent money to not only buy all those tickets for Black Panther, they also went out here to buy Black Panther merchandise, and the whole gesture that they get at the end of the day for their support of this movie and their support for the merchandise is one big middle finger from Kevin Feig and Disney. And if they're going to give you a middle finger, you need to vote with your wallet and you need to start spending your money on black owned black media produced by publishers like myself and many other black comic creators, black science fiction creators and black fantasy creators. Because when it comes down to creators like myself, we're the ones who want to try to give you those rich, diverse, and humanized images. And we are the ones who want to go out of our way to share you those positive stories that you're not going to get in the mainstream media. And it seems like people like your Kevin Feig have no interest in going out and giving you more of. Many black people went out of their way to go see Black Panther in the hopes of getting more black images in mainstream media, but we now see with the announcement that Captain Marvel will be the flagship character of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that black people need to take their black dollars and spend them with black creators on black owned projects and make efforts to elevate black owned black media because that's the only place where we're going to get more African American fantasy more African-American science fiction, and more African-American in fantasy and science fiction from a black perspective, because that's the only place where that material is appreciated and that material is respected on the regular. If you'd like to try some of my SJS Direct fantasy series like the Isis series, the East Team series, the Temptation of John Haynes, and the Spinsterella trilogy, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com in the description box. And if you want to help me make more videos like this and pay for book covers like those featured on Isis series books, East Team series books, John Haynes series books, and the Spinsterella trilogy, you may do so by donating to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Samurai Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on Kung Fu killers in this action-packed martial arts ISIS series adventure. Get ISIS Samurai Goddess in paperback and e-readers today.